Welcome to another broadcast from Haven Hill Baptist Church. We trust that you will be truly blessed. Our theme today, the response that is worthy of our salvation in Jesus Christ. There is a name I love to hear, I love to see its word. It sounds like you sit in my ear, the sweetest name, sweetest name on earth. When troubles come and comes a stormy need, it has the power to break man's chains and bring victory. It brings victory. There is no other name, no other mighty name, the sweet name of. His name brings power. You never find another name. how our circumstances can dictate how we respond to life's challenges. And in the message, I want to speak to you on the response that is worthy of our salvation in Jesus Christ, as set forth in Romans chapter 11, 11 through 32. Before we go any further, let us pray. We bow our Father in your presence. Take complete charge of the mind and heart of your servant and those who will be listening. Speak your truth clearly in their minds and hearts and give them grace to respond in a way that will be for their eternal good and for your glory. We ask these mercies in Jesus' name, and for his sake. Amen. This morning, as we, the born-again sons and daughters of God, 
reflect on our salvation. We can joyfully and confidently declare that no one has done for us, no one is doing for us, no one will do for us what Almighty God has done for us, is doing for us, and will do for us in Jesus Christ and his redeeming work on Calvary's cross. In fact, as the Apostle Paul reflected on the saving, transforming work of God in the lives of us Gentiles, in comparison to his chosen people, the Jews, he was careful to begin by establishing in the first place three reasons why our lives should be lives of endless thanksgiving and praise to Almighty God. For when Paul declared in Romans 11, 28 and 32, and 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, as concerning the gospel, their enemies for your sakes. For God hath shut up all of them in unbelief, that he might have mercy on all. For in all the grace of our Lord Jesus, but although he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that we through his poverty might be rich. He was establishing the fact that the life of the born again child of God should be a life of endless thanksgiving and praise to God because it is firstly the product of the infinite mercy and grace of Almighty God. For to save our souls, God temporarily placed his covenant people on the sideline of his redemptive plan so that he could make us who were nobodies, us who were aliens without rights, us who were seen and treated as dogs by the Jews, his own born again sons and daughters. We can understand, therefore, as Paul reflected on the mercy and grace of Almighty God, he broke forth in the anthem of praise recorded for us in Romans chapter 11 and in verse 33, the anthem, all the depths of the riches, both of wisdom and knowledge, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. The hymn writer was clearly celebrating this blessed truth when he wrote in the hymn, heaven came down and glorified my soul. The words, oh what a wonderful, wonderful day, day I will never forget. After wandered in darkness away, Jesus, my Savior, I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend. He met the needs of my heart. Shadows despairing. With joy, I am telling. He makes all my darkness depart. Heaven came down. And glory filled my soul. When on the cross, my Savior made me whole. My sins were washed away. My night was turned today. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. In fact, when Paul declared in Colossians 
chapter 1 and verse 13. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. And when the apostle Peter declared in 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 9 and 10 but you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation a peculiar or unique people that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light who are not a people but are now the people of God who have not obtained mercy but have now obtained mercy they are saying that our lives as a born again sons and daughters of God should be secondly lives of grateful praise to God because of the exalted position we now occupy in Jesus Christ Paul and Peter were saying in essence we want you to never forget never lose sight of the fact that your call to salvation is a call of infinite mercy and grace a call out of darkness into light a call of the doom of Satan's kingdom into the kingdom of God he made those things very, very clear to us. We want you to remember always how when you were nobodies, when you were spiritual outcasts and aliens without rights, God in infinite mercy and grace reached down, saved your soul, made you his chosen generation, his royal priesthood, is unique people on top of that when Paul declared in 1st Corinthians 13 and verse 12 for now we see through a glass darkly but then face to face now we know in part but then shall we know even as we are known he was establishing the fact that there is a lot about our salvation that we will never be able to fully comprehend and enjoy in the here and now. A lot that we will only be able to fully comprehend and enjoy in the eternal hereafter. Expressing even further his joyful anticipation of the there and then of the eternal hereafter. Paul declared in Philippians chapter 3 verses 13 and 14 Brethren I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. For in that declaration, Paul is saying, as the born again sons and daughters of God, do not allow your ugly past to re enslave you, to bury your soul in the pit of shame and hopelessness. Remember always that as far as the east is from the west so far have they removed your transgressions from you but there is no trial no coronavirus that can stop almighty God from fulfilling his redemptive plan and purpose in our lives and praise be to God at the distance between the east and the west is an immeasurable distance that is how far God had removed our transgressions 
from us. The songwriter was celebrating this precious truth when he wrote the chorus. Gone, 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 gone. Yes, my sins are gone. No, my soul is free and in my heart a song buried in the deepest sea. Yes, that's good enough for me. I shall live eternally. Praise God. My sins are gone. Never to be remembered anymore. Never to be remembered anymore. Jesus cast my burden of sinfulness into the sea of forgetfulness. Never to be remembered anymore. Then when Paul went on to declare in Ephesians chapter 5 verses 8 and 11. For you were sometimes darkness, but now are you lights in the Lord. Walk as children of light and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. He was establishing in the second place what such privileges and blessings demand of us, the born-again sons and daughters of God. Paul was saying, in essence, that if we are to walk worthy of who we are and what we have in Jesus Christ, we have to make certain that who we are and what we have in Jesus Christ is fleshed out before a watching world. We have to, by the grace of God, cultivate a life of holiness and use it to reprove and dispel the spiritual darkness all around us. We have to by confident faith in Almighty God not allow the coronavirus and all the other problems that we face to bury our soul in the pit of hopelessness. We have to anchor our souls in the unfailing truth of God's word and in the unfailing person of God himself. In fact, when the Apostle Paul went on to declare in Ephesians 4, verse 1, verse 3, then verse 22 to 24, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord Jesus, beseech you that you receive not the grace of God in vain, that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man who is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man who was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. He was highlighting firstly the behavior that should characterize our lives as we await our Lord's trumpet call home to glory. Paul was saying in essence, and you don't have a bath and put back on the same old dirty clothes you had on before you took that bath. So if your life in the here and now is to be consistent with the new life, the cleansed life, the new life that you have in Jesus Christ, then you have to, by the power and enablement of the indwelling Holy Spirit, Refuse to put back on the same old spiritually dirty clothes you had on before you had your spiritual bath in Jesus Christ. Then when Paul went on to declare in Ephesians chapter 5 verses 8 and 11, For you were sometimes darkness, 
But now are your lights in the Lord. Walk as children of light and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. He will say, as the born again sons and daughters of God, do not allow your ugly past to re enslave you, to bury your soul in the pit of guilt and shame. Remember always that as far as the east is from the west, so far have God removed your transgressions from you. Then when Paul went on to declare in Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 and 30, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty with God has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. For you, brethren, were called unto liberty, only not use your liberty as an occasion for the flesh, but in love serve one another. He was establishing, secondly, the lifestyle that is demanded of our new life in Jesus Christ. Paul was saying that if as the born again sons and daughters of God, our life is to be consistent with who we are in Jesus Christ, we have to, by genuine submission to the Lordship of Christ and the sanctifying work of the indwelling Holy Spirit, liberate our faith in a way that will prove that we are neither ashamed of Christ nor ashamed to Christ. On top of that, when Paul declared in Romans chapter 11 and verse 36, but of him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. He was highlighting in the third and final place the infinite resources that we have in Jesus Christ to live our lives triumphantly to the glory of God. Paul is saying that although when we embrace Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and Lord, God did not remove our old fallen sinful nature, thank God he gave us a brand new nature. And all the resources we need to overcome the lusts of our flesh, the diabolic assaults of the ungodly world around us, the seductions of the devil, and to live our lives to the glory of God. In fact, when Paul declared in Romans 8, 1 to 4, there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Though the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned the sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. He was saying, in essence, it matters not how messed up, how spiritually enslaved you are even now, if you would this morning acknowledge your sinfulness, your lost condition, to Almighty God, if you would anchor your faith in Jesus Christ and his finished work on the cross, if you would bow down your heart and your soul before God and ask him to save you, he will. He will keep his promise. He will save your soul. He will guarantee you 
and eternity with him in glory. Then when Paul declared in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 9, God is faithful by whom you are called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ. He was establishing the fact that the call to salvation is not only a call to freedom from sin and guilt, but a call into fellowship with the Godhead and with our brothers and sisters in Christ. On top of that, when Paul went on to declare in 2 Corinthians 8 9, for we know the grace of our Lord Jesus, that although he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that we through his poverty might be rich. He was saying, Although when we went to Christ for salvation, we took nothing but our sin or our weaknesses or spiritual poverty, God has in infinite mercy and grace not only made us his born again sons and daughters, but he has given to us everything we need to live victoriously in the here and now and reign with him in the eternal hereafter. And so the best both of us who know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and Lord can do to express our gratitude and our praise to Almighty God for his precious, saving, preserving work of mercy and grace in our lives is to flesh out by lip and life the words of the chorus I love you Lord and I lift my voice to worship you oh my soul rejoice take joy my king in what you hear make me a sweet sweet sound in your ear for you who have not by faith embraced Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, then what you need to do this morning above everything else is to bow down your soul at the nail pierced feet of Jesus. Confess your sins to Almighty God. Tell God that you believe that when Christ died on the cross, he paid in full for all your sins. And ask God to forgive you, to cleanse you of your sin, and to make you his born again son or daughter. For God promised that anyone who does that that soul will be saved. And if you would do that this morning, I'm going to ask you, right where you are, to bow your head before God. Avoid distractions, so we ask you to close your eyes if you could. And repeat this prayer. And we ask you again to make every word in this prayer your prayer to Almighty God. Repeat. Dear God, I know I am a sinner. I know that the best I could do would not be good enough to get me to heaven. Thank you for loving me so much that you sent your only son, the Lord Jesus, to become my substitute, to pay for my sins on the cross. I believe that when Christ died on the cross, he died in my place, he died for my sins, he paid in full 
for all my sins. And I embrace your promise that says, if we would confess our sins, you are faithful and you are just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I know that you cannot lie. And I have done exactly what you said. And I claim thy faith, your gift of salvation. Give me grace, dear God, to live the rest of my life in grateful praise and thanksgiving for what you have done for me. I ask these mercies in the name of Jesus and for the glory of God. Amen. Our Father, we wrap our lives around your promise. We know you cannot lie. And you said, if we would acknowledge our sins and call upon you for salvation in the name of Jesus, you would do it. Give those who generally pray that prayer the confidence that you're not only heard, but that you're answered. Let them know if Jesus is just a beginning. Like a child, they have to grow. They need your word. They need fellowship. We pray, Lord, that it will be possible for them to be with us at Haven, here Baptist. But if they can't, we beg you, in the name of the Lord Jesus, provide for them a good Bible believing by the teaching church where they can learn and grow in you. We commit them to your grace in the name of Jesus and for the glory of God. We ask these mercies. Amen.
If you would like to learn more about this priceless gift of salvation and finding peace and joy in Jesus Christ, you may call our church office at 876-931-4974 or 876-755-4426 or email us at havenhill at cwjamaica.com. Someone will be able to guide you in how to respond to different circumstances and growing in your relationship with Jesus Christ. For persons wishing to give their tithes and offerings and contribute financial gifts, you can make your deposits and electronic transfers to NCB, Constant Spring Branch, account number 334-082-563 or Scotiabank, Constant Spring Branch, account number 18 if you are transferring from a Scotia Bank account, you will need to include the branch code 21725 before the account number.